It was chosen by my father when he was in charge of selling a brothel in Charlottesville, Virginia. His friend said, you and your wife and your child can each pick one piece from the house, and this was what my father chose. I believe that it's from Wedgwood. A Mr. Wedgwood came to Charlottesville, oh, maybe 40 years ago, and was doing a show, and he borrowed pieces from various folks in the area. And he came to our house, and my mother said, don't you want to take the cheese plate? And he said, oh no, we knew about a plate at the Brookline Museum, and we knew a plate at the Victorian Albert, but we didn't know of any others. And that's now all I know. Why he didn't take it is that, in fact, it's not Wedgwood. Oh, bummer. Uh, <laughs> there, there is actually nothing about it that Wedgwood produced. Wedgwood didn't use this sort of finial on really? the top here. Wedgwood did not have this hunting scene, hunting scene that you would have on there. Wedgwood did not use these oak leaves on the base. This is a stoneware that's called drabware. It's a greenish brown color. Sometimes it has a soft glaze to it. Sometimes it's unglazed. Uh, Wedgwood did make a drabware, but theirs had a lot more of a green tint to it. It was a little bit different. Now, who could have made it? Well, there are different manufacturers in the area of Wedgwood that made similar kinds of wares, but they, they did their own thing. It dates to about 1880, which was a relatively popular time to make these covered cheese dishes. And it's really a fun piece. It's not marked, no, it's so not. we can't say for sure who did make it, but I can say for sure who didn't make it. At auction today, it would be in the range of 200 to $400. Oh, I'll use it. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll put it on the dining room table and put cheese in it. Excellent. <laughs>